I greet the viewers and the listeners in the name of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Um, we want to thank God for the gift of life. Uh, we are going to be going into our presentation, our lesson, lesson five for this quarter. And uh, we are going to be looking at uh, faith against all odds. Faith against all odds. A very interesting topic, Sis Kathy. I really enjoyed studying um, the lesson. But before we can go into our lesson, I'm going to ask you, Sis Kathy, to please open for us with a word of prayer. Okay, let us pray. Our Lord and Savior, we come before your throne this um, recording time. And we ask, Father, that you may guide us, that the Holy Spirit may give us discernment for spiritual things that spiritually discerned. We pray for our viewers, Father, that they too may find comfort in your word and understanding as we study this topic of the great controversy, a topic that needs to be well understood now than any other time. Be with us and we continue to seek your guidance in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 And by the way, my name is Sister Kumbumpofu. And together with me is uh, Sister Catherine Saope. Mm -hmm. We are not new here on this platform. We will be presenting lesson five today. Um, before we start, Sister Keith, I'm going to ask you to please read our text of consideration. Okay, um, our text of consideration, Sister Kumbu, comes from Psalms 119, verse 11, and I read from the New King James Version. Mm -hmm. Your word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. Mm. Your word I have I hidden in my heart mm. that I might not sin against you. These are the words by the psalmist, mm. the psalmist David. He says he has hidden God's word in his heart so that he may not sin yes. against God. Um, we find um, reformers, says Kathy, this week. We're going to look at... Um, reformers, how they kept their faith mm. against all odds. Mm. We are learning from the Bible characters like Paul, and we're also we're learning from the reformers. Mm. What it means, what they went through to keep their faith against all odds. Mm. One thing that uh, comes out so clearly about the reformers is that they, they had a purpose, their lives had a purpose. They had a purpose for life. You know, sometimes if you don't know your purpose in life, if you don't have a purpose for your life, you'll be driven by the wind mm. to and fro because you don't have a reason and a purpose to exist. You don't know why you exist mm. in the first place. But we find the reformers, they, they had such purpose in the word of God. They found purpose in the word of God. It was so clear to them to an extent that they were even prepared to die, mm. Kit, mm. for the word of God. You know, when I started that part, I asked myself a question, am I at that level, am I prepared mm. to die for this word, the word of God? Mm. That was the reformers. And one thing about it, Kit, the war that they fought, the battle they fought then, it's not yet over. It's now left up to us. We have to take over from where they left yes. and continue to fight till the end. Right now, we're living in the last days. This battle, this great, great controversy, it's about to be concluded. So we, it's time we, we, we decided which side we are on. Mm. At this point, I'm going to hand over to you, Sis Kit. Anything to say on the introduction of the lesson? Yes, um, to say Thy word is ever hid in my heart. Mm -hmm. I think it's very deep. You have intentionally taken time to actually study the word of God and store it in your heart. Mm. It's not a rushed kind of study. Yes. You know, you are st storing something so that um, I think for, for use at a later time. Mm. So you find that um, we are told that when we store memory texts in our hearts or the word of God in our heart, when the time comes for us to use it, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit will remind us. Yes. So how will the Holy Spirit remind 
if there is no if there's nothing that it's was not stored, stored. Yes. yeah so we need to make an effort to intentionally store mm. the word what i like actually thank you for that says kathy it's it's the word that is used by the psalmist hide mm. you know when you're hiding it's not just storing storing yes. you know you're hiding mm. you, if if I, if i had to store something in the cupboard kitchen cupboard mm. i just put it there but if i'm hiding it Mm. I don't want anyone to take to it. take it away from because the enemy is always there trying to steal this word from us. Mm. So in other words, the psalm says we must hide it somewhere to make sure that the enemy doesn't steal mm. from us. You know, the word of God it gave the reformers the the Bible characters it, it gave them true meaning in life. Mm. You know. The word of God gives us meaning in life, gives us purpose in life. So, we will now dive into God's word alone. It was God's word alone that the reformers stood on. God's word alone and nothing else. That's what they had. That's what they built their faith on. It gave them foundation for their faith. Yes. And it was also in incense the main essence for their teachings is mm -hmm. they were teaching is they were going about whatever they were doing it was actually the main thing in their lives yes you were you're about to say yes, something yes i was saying i was about to say it said in the word of god or oh, taste and um, see that the lord is good mm. so the mm. reason why you want to hide this word is because when you taste it yeah it's so sweet it's so good and you are willing to share something that is good like that yeah. if we go to psalms 119 verse 103 it says how sweet are, the, are thy words mm -hmm. unto my taste yeah yeah sweeter than honey to my mouth mm. so the word of god is not something that um is tasteless mm. or something that is not really worth delving into. Mm. It's so sweet that when you taste it, you also want to share it with others. Yes. 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 In fact, the whole chapter of Psalms 119, we find um, David's relationship with the Word of God. It was so intimate. If I'm to read uh, verse 162, mm -hmm. I rejoice at thy word, is one that findeth great spoil. He, he put so much, he found so much value, mm -hmm. you know, spoil. Mm -hmm. Not only spoil, but great spoil. In other mm -hmm. words, he had found treasure yes. in the word of God. Yes. And we find the same attitude with the, with the reformers. They also valued the word of God. I, I, I once heard that they would go for all night prayers just to study the word of God. Mm. The all night meeting just to dig deeper into the word of God, you know? And that makes me appreciate the word of God, um, uh, viewers. It, it took so much for these pioneers, these mm. reformers, mm. for me to be having this word today. Um, you find that these Christians, né, these reformers, they were not just um, casual Christians, you, you know? They were not complacent. Mm -hmm. They, they took the word so seriously. They were so committed to the word of God. They were not superficial, says Kathy. You know how sometimes we just over the surface, you know, they would go deeper with the word of God. Mm. That's what made them to find purpose and for them to be able to stand firm on the word of God and have this faith that was against all odds. Mm. Mm. I don't know if you have anything to say. No, no, I think you've um, covered all the points. All okay. That, mm. And also, let's look at, um, you know, one of the stories that interests me about the pioneers and the reformers, John Wycliffe. He, he translated the Bible into English. Mm -hmm. And um, we find that he, he faced so much opposition to an extent that he was sentenced to death. But when he was about to die. During his trial, he says, who do you think you're contending with? You think you're contending with me? Mm. <laughs> the old man who's, who's facing the grave? No. He says, you're contending with the truth. 
which will actually overcome you, which is more powerful than you. Mm. And we, years later, we find his words being so true because the translations into English that he did, the, 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 that light, it, 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 it shone all the way into the, the darkness of the Middle Ages. That's how powerful the word of God is. Hundreds of years to come, when he was sleeping in the grave, his works, they followed him. So when you say translate, um, what was the word of God? Um, what was the limitation there? Why was the word of God not in the language that the natives could understand? And how was it tra transmitted to them if they could not understand um, the language in which it was written? I remember the, 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 the rulers at that time, the papacy, they tried to keep the word of God away from the people mm -hmm. through the language, language barrier. They couldn't understand. Some of them, remember, they could only understand English only. And also, it was deliberately kept away from the people. It was, it was dangerous for you to be found with a copy, you know. So people like John Wycliffe, they wanted to bring that to an end. So what I can say, Sister Kumbu, is that in the great controversy that you are studying, yeah. there is um, this fight for either the word of God yeah. to to be to come through and to be given to the people yeah. in a way that they can understand, or for it to be shut out, to be obliterated. Actually, if it was possible, mm. the devil seeks that this truth that we have in the word of God, it be so uh, mad or so insufficient mm. such that um, this truth does not um, go far and wide. Yeah. So we must in t be intentional in um, being evangelists. Yeah. We must be intentional in spreading the word of God because this, the enemy of souls is seeking to make sure that this truth does not go far and wide. Exactly. Mm. If he doesn't stop it using one way, he will use the other way mm -hmm. until he gets so frustrated and then death decree comes. Yes. So let's talk about passing on God's word. It has been defended. It has been translated. There are some people who have given their lives so that other people can access the word of God. Mm. Now that the people can access it now, what's the next thing? The next thing is to pass it on. Mm -hmm. The baton cannot remain in, in the hands of those who've been given the word of God. Mm -hmm. Paul, uh, let me read from 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 4, verse 1. It reads as follows, But I determined this, oh sorry, chapter 4, therefore, Seeing we have this ministry as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Mm in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves not your servants, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus. Mm -hmm. So in other words, Paul says we, we, we have a duty to make sure that we pass on the word of God to other people who don't know about it, who have never heard it. Mm -hmm. We have that duty, not only to those who don't know it, who have never, and also to, to the coming generations. We have that responsibility, that duty to make sure we pass it on. Yes, and if we read from uh, Revelation 14 verse 13, mm -hmm. it says, Then I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, 
right blessed are the blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, that they may rest from the labors and the works uh, uh, follow them. So we, we, we are to have a record that follows us after we, we rest mm. or we fall asleep. Um, make hay while the sun shines. Yeah. While we are still alive, we are expected to do exactly like what you are doing, to distribute this word, to make others know about the goodness of the Lord. Exactly. But one thing we must know is that uh, this spreading of the gospel, it always comes with challenges, says Keith. Challenges, trials. Mm. When you look at Paul's life, it was full of trials. In the Bible, in, in the book of uh, Corinthians, he actually lists the challenges that he went through. Mm. He mentions shipwrecks. Mm. He mentions prison. He mentions being beaten. You know, he, he mentions hunger, cold. I remember when he writes in Timothy, he says, bring my jacket before mm. winter. These are challenges that he made. So viewers, we must know that as we pass on the word of God, we are going to meet trials, temptations, challenges. But our faith is to go against all odds. Mm. Like in the case of Paul, in the case of reformers, says Kathy, you know, at this point, let me mention William Tyndall. Mm. William Tyndall, we, we see him about 140 years translate, still translating the Bible into English after John Wycliffe. Mm. And as he translates, he's correcting John Wycliffe's errors. Mm. He is still trying to accomplish what John Wycliffe started. Mm. And also him, we find him as well going the same way. He is sentenced to death. He's mm. actually choked before he's put on the stake and he's killed. Hmm. But what, what touches me about these men of God, men and women of God, they are words as they die, says Kathy. Oh, full of hope. John Wycliffe says, this truth will overcome you. And Utindal, he, he says something that's so similar to what John Wycliffe, they are full of hope, says Kathy. They know that the, at the end of it all, this truth will triumph mm. against all odds. Mm. It will definitely triumph. So they are so rooted in this word. Yeah. That's why we are saying it needs to be studied. You can't just gloss over it. Yeah. You need to really study it so that it is rooted in you such that you will not waver against all odds. No matter what comes your way, you know that what you believe, what you have read is true and shall come to pass. Exactly. Hmm. In fact, Tyndall's dying words, he actually says, I'd like to read the zones. Eh? His dying words, he says, Lord, open the king of England's eyes. Hmm. And we find those words being so true. Do you know, within four years of his death, we find four translations being published. Hmm. Imagine. Hmm. And one of them is actually King James Version in 1611. Whoa. Just think of it. We're told that about 76% um, of uh, the Old Testament is actually Tyndall's work. 83% mm. of the New Testament is Tyndall's work. Mm. So we see the word of God triumphing, my brothers and sisters, against all odds. It triumphs. We are, we are to have that faith that will see the, our faith triumphing against all odds. <clears throat> now, let's come to, to the enlightenment by the Holy Spirit. When it comes to the word of God, it's important that we know that we are to be enlightened by the Holy Spirit. Because this can be, someone can read the word of God, but without the enlightenment from the Holy Spirit himself, mm. you won't understand anything. Mm. That's why the Bible says that spiritual things are spiritually mm. descent. So we really need the Holy Spirit when it comes to God's word. Otherwise, we will just read and get lost and confuse ourselves even more. I don't know if you have anything to say on that. Yes, uh, just to 
emphasize on what you are saying about the Holy Spirit being the one who guides, yes. who gives discernment and understanding, mm -hmm. for he is the author yeah. of the Bible in, in yes. itself. Yeah. So it says, but, but, but the helper, John 14 verse 26, mm -hmm. but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, mm -hmm. he will teach you all things and bring to you remembrance all things that I said to you. Mm. Mm. So that is the work of the Holy Spirit. Yes. When it comes to understanding yeah. the word of God, when it comes to imparting it um, in, in our hearts and bringing all things to remembrance. Like I said before, when the word is stored in the heart, when the mm -hmm. time comes for you to use that word, the Holy Spirit will bring it to remembrance. Amen. 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 And also one of my favorite um, scriptures in the Bible, John 16, 13, Happy it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you unto all truth. Mm -hmm. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Mm -hmm. So we see the Holy Spirit guiding, leading, when it comes to the word of God, the truth, we are to listen and allow the Holy Spirit to guide us. So I would say um, to our viewers, Sister Kumbu, mm -hmm. that when we endeavor to read the word of God, it is always best to start by prayer mm. of um, asking the Holy Spirit to be your guide. Mm. Don't just... Um, delve into the word of God, you know, just start reading mm. recklessly. Mm. It is important that before you read even just a verse from the word of God, ask the Holy Spirit to be your guide for understanding because spiritual things are spiritually descent. Yes, yes. Mm. In fact, Sis Kathy, in when the devil is trying to, to make sure that um, the people don't access the word of God, he tried and he failed. Remember, the, the Bible ended with the masses. They eventually accessed it. Mm -hmm. Then now he had to come up with another method, another tactic. Remember, he's very stubborn. He will not just give up. Mm -hmm. So what did he do? He, he went on to remove this supernatural aspect of the Bible, which is the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And then he exaggerates the human element. Mm -hmm. That's when you find uh, someone actually saying, anyway, the Bible was written by human beings. We're like you and me. Mm. That's where it's coming from. Mm. Because when it's like that, then the supernatural aspect of the Bible has been downplayed. And the human element of it has actually been exaggerated. Mm. You know, yes, it was human beings, but the Bible says, as they were moved the Holy by the Holy Spirit. So it was just not human beings, you know, because once we remove the supernatural element of God's word, then the Bible becomes like any other book. Mm. It, it has been reduced to any, any secular earthly book, mm. which is very dangerous, you know, because this is a supernatural book that was led by the Holy Spirit as the writers were writing it. Anything to say? However, I would encourage us to still read the word of God. Mm -hmm. Even if um, it's being downplayed like that. When you read it, the word of God is a living word. Yes. It's a quickening word. Yes. You will feel the difference. Mm. You will realize that, but this is not like all other books. Yeah. So even if um, the devil is trying by all possible ways yes. to downplay the word of God, he can only do so much. Yeah. Yes, it's, it's good for us. Just go ahead and read it and you will see the effects of it. Yes, mm. amen. And also go, going back to our, um, our pioneers, our reformers, we, we, we find a conversation between John Knox, you know, John Knox, one of the reformers, and Mary, the Queen of the Scots. She says to John Knox, um, they interpret the Bible in a, in, a, in a certain way and you interpret it in a different way from them. So I'm so confused. So who, who do I believe? Mm. You know what John Knox said to him, to her? He said, just believe God mm. who's clearly stating things in the Bible. Believe God whose word is so clear. Mm. And he says, if any of the sides deviates from 
God's word, then don't listen to any of the two sides. Mm. Don't listen to my side. Don't listen to their side. But listen to God's side, which is in the word of God. That's what I'll, leave, I'll, I'll say to you viewers. If you're feeling confused, the word, it interprets itself. Mm. Don't listen to other people as they interpret it for you. Just ask the Holy Spirit, like we've said, he's there to guide us. He's there to lead us. Now we come to, to the essence of salvation. How are we saved, says Kathy? Hmm. Are we saved through our works? Are we, are we able to earn the salvation for ourselves through good works? Hmm. Definitely not. We are saved by faith. Yes. Only by faith in what um, Christ did for us. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we are saved by works only. No, the, we are not saved by works, but we are saved by faith by what Christ did for us. Yes. But we find that um, in the gospel that was being um, elevated by the papacy, it was works related mm. in that if you do good works, you could earn something out of it. Um, that is why you find even up to now, there's the practice of you can pay yeah. for your sins mm. to be forgiven. The you can penis. sin, yeah, and pay, pay penance because if you've got the money, why not? Why not? Why yes. not? So why not sin because I can afford it. Yes. <laughs> so whatever we do, if we do not do it in Christ, no matter how good it is, it is not recorded yes. in the books of heaven. Yes. Any good works that, are, that we do that are actuated by the Holy Spirit that mm. must be done in the name of Jesus Christ, for them to be accepted by the Father mm. as a sacrifice mm. worthy accepting. Exactly. That is the position that Christ has been given, that Satan hates actually. That is the position that he thinks Jesus does not deserve. Mm. In fact, in the book of Romans, for the wages of sin is death, mm. but the gift of God is eternal life mm. in Jesus Christ our Lord. Mm. So Christ, viewers, he, he left the splendor of heaven, came here on earth. He lived a sinless life. He died for your sins and my sins. He purchased our salvation. So it's only through Christ and Christ alone mm. that we are saved. Through his grace, as we are accepted by faith, as we are accepted by faith. Because there's also... This element of, 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 of misinterpreting grace is mm -hmm. where I can do anything. I can sin as much as I want because grace covers me. What can you say, says Kate, about that? I'm covered by grace. So I can do anything because Christ's grace covers me. That then downplays the whole aspect of the plan of redemption. If it, it is so, uh -huh. then um, why did Christ come to die for us on the cross of Calvary if there is no, if the law is not part of this whole plan of redemption? Uh -huh. Why did Christ come to die on the cross of Calvary? Yeah. Because remember, the word of God in Romans 6 says, uh, 23 says, the uh -huh. wages of sin is dead. Yeah. So that part had to be satisfied and Christ satis uh, mm -hmm. satisfied it for us, uh, satisfies it for us. Mm -hmm. But for us to qualify with grace, mm -hmm. we have to admit that we are wrong. We have to confess our sins. Mm -hmm. They have to be cleansed from us. Yes. And um, that's when grace takes over. But it does not overlook the sin. Yes. And, and the wages of sin is, has never been removed. The justice of it has never been removed. Because he's a, he's a God of both grace, justice and mercy. Mm -hmm. Justice and mercy. That's why we find at the cross is Kathy. Both of them, they were satisfied. Justice yes. was satisfied. Yes. Mercy was satisfied. So let's talk about obedience uh, being the fruit of faith, says Kathy. Mm -hmm. uh, because um, why is this that temptation of, of saying, I'm covered by grace so I can sin as much as I can. Mm -hmm. There's also another temptation on the other end that believes that I, ca I can be saved through obedience. Mm -hmm. 
through the law only, as long as I obey, then I can be saved. That is salvation by works. By works. Mm -hmm. By works. Yes. Go ahead, says Kathy. Yeah, so well, salvation by works is what we are saying is also a no-no. Yes. Christ has been given the prerogative of us being accepted as um, pure and righteous before God. Mm -hmm. Anything else outside that, that is not acceptable. For the word of God says all our righteousness is like filth the rags to him. Mm. No matter how good you are, 200%, not even 100 For as long as it is not under the righteousness of Christ, yes. it is like filthy rags to mm -hmm. God. So that one that we have just described of the law and the law only, mm. the salvation by works. Remember what um, the rich young ruler did when he approached uh, Christ. He said, but I've done that. Mm. I keep the whole law. Ticking the yes, boxes. Ticking the boxes. And Christ still said, no, you are still lacking. Yeah. Because there is no salvation by works. Yeah. So viewers, mm. uh, list any main boasts mm. who were saved through Christ by faith in him, mm. through his grace. Obedience is actually, says Kibbe, a fruit of our faith. Mm -hmm. Now that I understand that Christ has saved me through his grace, it will show in my works. Mm. It must show in my works mm. because sometimes we claim to be saved, but the works are still not saying that. Mm. They're still not agreeing. Mm. So the works, they are actually a fruit, fruits of our faith in Jesus. Um, viewers, we have come to the end of our lesson. We pray that um, the Holy Spirit will continue to enlighten us as far as this subject is concerned. And our prayers that let our faith be so strong, such that it will go against all odds. Mm. We have seen how the reformers, how the Bible characters, how they stood firm on the word of God even if they were faced with all sorts of odds, including death, they were prepared mm. to die. How I pray that God will increase our faith to that level. Any parting shots, Sis Kathy? Yes, um, viewers, um, the, the word of God comes to us at a very high cost. Yes. We need to take the button stick, Sister Kumu, from yeah. our previous um, believers. Mm. I'm reminded of the world dances what they did to preserve the word of God, not only to preserve it, but also to share it with others. Mm. I hear that they'll take their children, yeah. like teenagers or younger, mm. and ask them to memorize like the whole book of Matthew. Mm. The other family memorizes the whole book of Mark mm. like that. That's how they valued the word of God. Let us take over and let us not take it lightly and let us... Um, Remember that it came to us at a cost and we should be able to benefit from it and also to share with others. Amen. Mm -hmm. Shall we pray? Our kind and our loving Father who is in heaven, Lord, we can't thank you enough for what you did for us on the cross of Calvary. We can't thank you enough, Lord, for your word that you have made sure it has been preserved over years just so that it can get to us. Mm. Help us, Lord, to appreciate it. Help us to study it, to commit it to memory, Lord, because we know that we are about to go into a time of persecution mm. when these Bibles will be taken away from us and we'll need to remember it from memory. Oh, Lord, how I pray that you may give us the spirit that was in the Bible characters like Paul, mm whose faith stood against all odds. How I pray that we may have the spirit of the reformers, Lord, who went through the worst, even death, they were prepared to die for this word. Mm. Oh Lord, give us that spirit. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen.